This is the Energy Makers Show, featuring the innovators, financers, and policymakers focused on the global energy demand. Brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. Hi, I'm Russ Kapper, and welcome to another episode of the Energy Makers Show. Today, first up, Paul Dickerson sits down with David Goswick, founder and CEO of HOWZ, that's H-O-U-Z-E, the Z-E standing for Zero Energy. They're the company building energy efficient homes completely powered by natural gas and through an innovative generator system and a method that includes selling excess electricity back to the grid presents a new homeowner with a home that includes zero energy cost for the first 10 years of ownership. Then up next, Robin Canoke sits down with Michael Breen, a co-founder with Extreme Power, the Austin-based energy storage business that upgraded their business significantly when they installed a large-scale storage system on the South Pole. Robin and Michael talk about storage, clean energy, and the changing landscape brought on by the abundance of inexpensive and clean natural gas. All of that, right after this. Where will the energy come from to move us forward? From natural sources in abundant supply, or perhaps a man-made source? At NRG, we believe innovation will solve our energy needs. That's why NRG is moving away from fossil fuels towards wind, solar, and other sustainable technologies to power the smart grid, the electric car, and our clean energy future. We're using all of our energy to develop more of it. This is the Energy Maker Show, brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And now, back to the Energy Makers Show with your host, Paul Dickerson. Welcome back to the Energy Makers Show. Our guest now, David Goswick, founder, chairman, and CEO of Howes. David, great to have you on the program. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate it. So tell us about Howes. Howes Advanced Building Science, Inc. is a Houston-based company. Howes is spelled H-O-U-Z-E, and the Z-E stands for Zero Energy. And we're building zero energy homes in Houston, Texas, and getting ready to build across the United States. But we also go a little further than that. Uh, We've engaged scientists from the Houston area, NASA, the Houston Advanced Research Center, to create new technologies that change the performance of homes. And is it really zero energy? There are many, many different definitions about zero energy homes, but it's powered by natural gas but it generates more electricity than the homes use, we sell that back to offset the natural gas cost. All right, but is there a connection to the grid? The home is powered off-grid first, then it has battery storage back up at the second tier, and then the grid is the third level of energy security. Both to receive and to get. And to sell back. Fascinating. And where, where are you building these homes? We, we searched the entire United States, and, and fortunately, we found right in our backyard in Independence Heights, a community just north of the Houston Heights, Right. we felt like was the ideal setting for introducing these game-changing homes. Well, and, and the homes look like what? The homes look like they're arts and crafts style homes. Um, the first model home and demonstration home is a bungalow. And so it's very counterintuitive. A lot of people perceive that a zero energy home would be very modern. Sure. And these look like they belong perfectly in Woodland Heights. And the approximate retail cost of these? The the sales range of the homes in Independence Heights is $150,000 to $250,000. For what square footage? Uh, The square footage ranges from 1,200 square feet to 2,800 square feet. As I've heard people talk about either lowering the energy consumption or producing energy to kind of hit that right balance, what's your secret? It's really a convergence of a lot of technologies and changing situations. And if inspired a little bit by mobile devices and tablets, um, we, we find that the greatest technologies, the cost reduces and the performance improves. And after dealing with home builders and large developers for 25 years, the home is really the last product, American product, to really embrace this change. As you look on the efficiency side, uh, how do you make these homes, how are your homes more efficient? Well, it starts with efficiency. We wanted to eliminate all waste uh, from the zero-based thinking. We thought, how do we build a building envelope that is so well insulated and so tight 
that it consumes very little energy. At the same time, we wanted to build a home that was more durable and safer. So Houston being an area that we do have hurricanes, we felt like it needed to be able to withstand at least 130 plus mile an hour winds. So the framing is steel, it's light gauge steel. All right. The insulation is very, very tight and, and dense. And uh, then we had to evaluate the weakest link in that building envelope. The windows? The windows and the doors. So when we added it all together, it became a super tight, super strong building envelope. The HERS rating on our homes earned hers. a home energy rating score. We achieved a 44, which is unheard of. And for listeners, I would encourage them if they're home shoppers, ask the builder, what is the HER score? Well, and that's the efficiency side. Talk about the power generation side. Okay, we, we thought it's one thing to achieve a super energy efficient home. Right. And the term energy star or energy efficient, it's really kind of hard to find any new home or any home that's not talking about energy efficiency. Right. We felt like we could really accelerate the market by five to 10 years if we could produce all the electricity and then some on site. So we, we went on a global quest to identify technologies that could provide that power cost effectively. And are these solar, small scale wind? We looked at solar, the- we looked at wind, we looked at fuel cells everywhere in the world. We came remarkably close to a small fuel cell out of Australia. We got really close to implementing it. But it, it was new emerging technology. We felt like it wasn't quite as reliable. And again, we came back to Houston, and there's an awful lot of talent here, uh, NASA scientists. Sure. And, and so we, we engaged leading scientists and existing technology, and we have a micro-cogeneration power cell that produces the electricity. Well, tell me about that. The micro-cogeneration power cell is a combination of traditional technology, technology that would power an industrial site, for example. We have scaled it down to size so it operates on a home. It produces electricity, and it also produces thermal heat. So you've got a a great-looking bungalow home that's efficient. You're generating uh, power on site and selling it to the grid? We're selling it back to the grid. So it's powered by natural gas. So as you can imagine, a lot of Houston companies and the American Gas Association like what we're doing. Sure, and gas is cheap now. It's it's. The home is powered by 100% natural gas that's domestic, it's clean, and it's inexpensive. What we know is the homeowner doesn't want an energy payment. So we have the first and only of its kind zero energy warranty that guarantees 10 years of zero electricity and zero gas payments. Incredible. So now now that you've figured it out, now that you've unlocked the, the puzzle, what how do you scale? We team with industry giants. and. Uh, and also public partnerships. So we partnered with the city of Houston and we didn't go in with our hand out. We went in with a, a great concept and we secured, we own about 90 lots in Independence Heights. So it's enough to really make a difference sure. in the community. And we went in with a game plan that said, this is what we would like to do. We'd like the birthplace to be in Houston, Texas, and we'd like it to be in Independence Heights. Independence Heights is a historic African-American community that's been underserved for many years. We felt like this would be a good community development project. The city helped us in identifying the community leaders that we needed to meet with. Right. And we got great input from them, and it's been a great partnership. That's fantastic. And, and do you have plans then outside of Houston? We are expanding outside of Houston. Um, along with our industry partners, we're taking this to 30 U.S. cities. 30 cities. And the way that we're doing that is we're partnering with local builders. We're sending out later later next month um, an RFQ and RFP to builders that we've identified in these market areas. AT&T Digital Life is one of our strategic teammates. Which is pretty innovative from what I've heard. Very, very innovative. Uh, We've all heard of smart homes. They were way ahead of their time. 20 years ago, they weren't very smart. They weren't very reliable. Today, the convergence of technologies, they're really smart and they're inexpensive. 
Well, incredible. And Houston's lucky to, to have you as the home where it originated. And it sounds like the mayor's office recognizes fairly recently. The mayor hosted a press conference on November 29th. Since that day, we've had over 800 people register online or contact us about either purchasing or building a zero energy home. What's the web address? the zeroenergyhome.com well congratulations you'll have to come back and tell us how how 2013 goes thank you very much paul appreciate it and that wraps our discussion with david goswick we'll be back with more right after this at bkd we understand the constantly shifting nature of the energy industry as a national cpa and advisory firm we serve energy clients from the beginning to the end of the cycle our experienced energy advisors serve approximately 300 energy companies in exploration, midstream, downstream, oil field services, and power production. Plus, we're the largest North American member of the Praxity Global Alliance, which means we can help you wherever you operate. Contact a BKD advisor or visit us online to learn more. This is the Energy Makers Show, brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And now back to the Energy Makers Show. Welcome back to the Energy Makers Show. I'm Robin Canoke, and my guest today is Michael Breen, co-founder of Extreme Power, located just outside of Austin, Texas. Thanks so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Tell us about Extreme Power. We founded in 2004. Um, we're utility scale energy storage, mm -hmm. um, which means tens of megawatts and tens of megawatt hours. Um, I was one of the founders, there are three of us in 2004. Mm -hmm. When we were building Extreme Power, we had an interesting, unique power cell and we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do with it. We made boxes that went in the back of trucks, we made boxes that went to Home Depot, we made units that went uh, to the border of, of Mexico um, for non-electrified. So smaller units. We made a lot of smaller units and then, um, but we knew that we could make megawatt size. And so um, our story was about figuring out the right time and getting lucky and getting that first contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First contract was down at the South Pole. Um, it came about because we were um, going to these conferences and people were talking chemistry and I couldn't talk chemistry and we could talk solutions. And so sort of circumstances arose so that we were able to win a project that put a large scale system on the South Pole. Our real trick, our real feat that establishes the company is that we got that order from the first meeting and delivered a successful unit within about nine months. Um, that gave us credibility of people that could deliver product projects. Well, I don't want you to talk chemistry with me, but tell me a little bit about the secret sauce of, of Extreme and how you're different kind of than the rest of the industry. Uh, you know, I'm a founder. Right. I'm no longer um, you know, active in the company in mm -hmm. June of 11. Um, uh, I was on the board, I was CFO and I was on the board until about June of 11. But I'm still very proud of the company and they're still- Absolutely. Um, and so the, the secret sauce um, was the ability to deliver solutions. It was the batteries plus the power electronics plus the control system um, and it involved talking solutions and not talking chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and that really was a differentiator. It still continues to be a differentiator. I think that Extreme Power knows how to deliver systems and put them on the ground working. So as CFO, I bet you had to raise a lot of capital. We were lucky enough to be successful raising capital. Um, we um, uh, you know, started with uh, early investors in Austin. We uh, raised money through Emerging Technology Fund, and then we were able to bring in strategic and Corp and, and Silicon Valley VCs um, to the order of magnitude of more than $50 million. Um, so um, yeah, that was an accomplishment. And, that was quite a feat. And, that w and we're proud of that. And um, it's, a, it's been a good investment. We are, you know, Extreme Power is one of the leaders of utility scale storage. Let's talk harder. about natural gas um, and how that really does affect the, the energy industry and in finding financing for projects. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I have two stories for that one. Because that's not going away, right? Like we're only finding more and more and more right. natural gas. Right, so I mean, it's um, we are in the middle of a dramatic change of our energy landscape. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's already happened and there's a lot of us that are slow to really appreciate it. <laughs> um, not only has gas, you know, there's the reduced price of gas, um, and the shifting from gas from coal to gas and electricity, um, but we now have a reduced volatility in the gas price, which 
changes all sorts of things that are mm-hmm. not natural to people that don't live in trading markets. Right. Um, but the trading guys are, this, this really radically changes. Um, it'll change the adoption of technology and it'll change sort of everything. So um, literally we're seeing coal plants close, we're seeing exporting coal, we're seeing increase in gas, that's reducing the cost of electricity. It puts serious pressure on wind and solar, um, which puts new pressure on new technology companies trying to bring out Mm -hmm. clean energy. At the same time, there's, there's a giant positive in the carbon footprint of shifting from coal to gas, so we got that going for us. Right. Do you think we'll start seeing the export of natural gas? We absolutely. Uh, I mean, um, if you, yes, I, I think that that comes real short term um, and will be a generational. I mean, this has event. to be incredibly good for the economic outlook of Texas. It's incredibly good for the economic <laughs> outlook of Texas. There's going to be tons of opportunities. Last year, I was. Um, working with some investors, a fund that was looking to leverage new technology that becomes viable with the reduction of the cost of gas, natural gas and the um, reduced in volatility. The example that we talked about, really easy to understand, is uh, fleet vehicles, garbage trucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it is now very viable for garbage trucks to run on either compressed natural gas or liquid natural LNG. Um, and so there should be an opportunity for new technologies that facilitate that. That puts pressure on now the battery industry as well, because instead of electric vehicles, which were viable, now we have a natural gas. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it becomes, it opens up whole new opportunities inside natural gas technologies. And, you know, there's going to be leaps and bounds of improvements in compressors, for example, as, as, as those different infrastructures sort of take hold. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is scary if you're a solar developer. It is exciting if you're a technology develop if you're a natural gas technology entrepreneur. And it's exciting for the budget of Texas. <laughs> it's well from a, from Texas point of view, absolutely. From but also from Pennsylvania and New York, sure, and Arkansas and uh, wherever those Louisiana, wherever those um, shell plays are. Thank you so much for joining me today, Michael. I really appreciate it. Robin, thank you very much. I enjoyed being here. And that wraps up this episode of The Energy Makers Show, heard on the radio and seen online at theenergymakers.com.